Hello, everybody. Thank you for being here today. I'm very excited about um, bringing this to you because it's been in the making for a long time. Um, this is another video about um, knowing your reptilian, knowing if you are dating a reptilian and knowing, uh, you know, what what they do to uh you know, entice you and come and come after you and, and get you in, in their claws, basically. So um, I have K.A. here with me. Um, she is uh, we're covering her face because because of work reasons, she's not allowed to, um, you know, to show her face or be on interviews. So we wanted to make sure we were safe with that. So thank you, Kay, for being here and uh, sharing your story. Uh, it's, uh, I know you've been wanting to share this story with me and I'm so grateful that you have, because I, I do think that this is something that people need to know and it's going to help them very much. Thank you so much for having me. And, um, I can't think of a better person to share this story with because I have such an immense trust in you and your energy and your work. And then also because you were a part of the story because um, you did my quantum hypnosis and um, the, you know, the, the reveal of this individual um, gr in great part happened with you. And so, so I can't think of a better person to, to do this with. Well, thank you. And so in case people are wondering, our connection was that um, Kay came to do a uh, hypnosis session with me back in the day when I was doing them. And um, that's when we, you know, discussed what was happening and we talked about it. And um, as she reminds me, it was a crazy session. And, um, and now, I mean, and this was years ago, so now we're finally able to talk about it and, and discuss it. So the mm -hmm. first thing I want to do, um, I do want to apologize. My cat is playing with his toys, which he never plays with, but today he is. Um, so, um, I apologize for the noise, but, uh, Kay, if you will tell us what I want to do is really go through the the space of like the story, how did you meet him and how did he entice you to start going out with him? And then when things changed, when, uh, when then you noticed, you know, what was happening, uh, you can talk about our session and you could talk about any, really any details that you think is going to help people know and understand that they are dating, you know, uh, a shape-shifting reptilian or yes. just, um, a regular narcissist or mm -hmm. um you know there's also the reptilian where they take the soul out of the body they go they come into the body and i don't think those shape shift i'm not sure but i don't think they do so mm -hmm. um so okay so let's start from the beginning and tell us like how you met him and and how did you start you know feeling like this strong attraction for sure so this story um, stems over a five and a half year period. And so um, I just want to say that during that time, so this started back in 2019, and that was when I met him. Um, at that time, I didn't realize, um, I didn't know anything about reptilians. Uh, this was before my own awakening, um, which, which kind of coincides in the story. So I will kind of go over it a little bit because it's part of the story. But um, so back then, I had no idea anything that they ex really even existed. I mean, I had heard a little bit about them, but um, I was not self aware in terms of my own spirituality, my own origins. Um, that didn't come until later. So I just thought I was, you know, regular human going out dating into the world. Um, and so I met him just like any other person meets people online. Uh, we matched and um, I went out with him. Um, and so to give you a little bit of a visual, this person is six foot six. And at the time he was about 260 pounds of just solid muscle with huge traps, uh, very, uh, very um 
you know, uh, chiseled jawline with eyebrows that look angry, um, very tall, dark and handsome, black eyes, black hair. Um, and when I met him, he was very, uh, very serious. Um, we had gone out to a restaurant. He wasn't smiling. He wasn't um, like telling jokes or 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 asking me questions in a friendly way. He was kind of stepped kind of t stepped back a bit and sizing me up is what I noticed. So he was looking me up and down curiously. He was looking at my body. He was kind of just it's almost like um, yeah, it was almost just sizing sizing me up and um, he would ask me questions, but almost like an, a job interview. It wasn't uh, like I was having a conversation with somebody that flowed in a normal way, the way that you, you would get to know a person. It was more like, a job. are you good for this job type of thing? Um, and after our date, when we were in the car, um, he had asked me, so he lives in a building that has a restaurant in the bottom. The restaurant was completely empty and he had asked me to go have a drink at that restaurant. And as soon as we sat down, we sat down, it was like on a couch and he was sitting beside me and there was like, a a table in the front and the waiter brought two drinks and then he just looked at me and smiled and then he just attacked me and kissed me <laughs> and that was the moment where I think he he figured out this one is good I'm gonna get this one um and so when we went upstairs to his house um, he was loving, affectionate, uh, happy, joyful, started telling me stories about his past and almost like this, like he turned into this like childish energy and it was just an immediate different personality completely. Um, he made me feel very relaxed because before that I was feeling like nervous, almost like, um, like the way that you would feel when you go to do a panel interview and there's like three people interrogating you and you have this sort of uh, um, uncomfortable feeling in your stomach like uh, like I, I what you know I don't know if I'm doing well and just this insecurity but once he he flipped into the other personality um he was funny and joyful and another thing is is that these types they are ex extremely sexual um and so they will try to get you in bed immediately um and so he actually grabbed me we were in the living room he grabbed me he picked me up he walked me over to his bed and he threw me on the bed and he got on top of me and he was extremely big and i had to physically push him off and go no 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 i'm i'm not doing this and he kept saying we're adults and he got back on top of me and i'm like absolutely not and so i kept pushing him off finally he relented but almost like in this kind of angry like hmm, i'm not getting what i want and then he i saw that part of him and then he quickly switched back to normal like oh okay okay i'm gonna I'm going to be the nice, cordial, happy self so that I don't scare her off type of thing. Um, and so um, when I ended the date, I mean, the date was probably like three hours long. Um, and so when I ended the date and I left, the text messages started immediately calling me baby, sweetie. I've never met anybody like you before. Um, I've, you know, you have such a good energy. Um, I, you know, you only meet somebody like this in a time span of 10 years. Um, you know, I think that you and I are gonna, are gonna be so good together and honey, sweetie, um, we should take a trip together. Like immediately started with like bombarding me with like affection and, and in a way that I don't think I had ever felt by anybody before. It was very, very intense. And the thing about these dra the dracos especially the shifters they have a very intense energy no matter what energy they switch into so if they are their true selves it's like you are being energetically attacked 
um, in a negative way. But if they switch into their positive self, it also feels like you're being energetically bombarded with love. And it's a fake love, but it is like this overwhelming sense of um, like validation that they give you. And so it can be very, very alluring. Uh, the other thing is that they have a magnet, a sexual magnetism that I've never experienced before in my life. Um, my ex-husband before that was an incredibly, um, incredibly attractive man. And he had a sexual magnetism as well. And he was very highly narcissistic. But the differences between both of them are just unbelievable. It's like night and day. Um, the the sexual magnetism that these one that dracos have like the reptilians um it's almost like a, they get you into this mind control obsession about them um and they also have certain pheromone like a smell a, almost like a smell that's addictive um and it's very very difficult to explain but i i um yeah, you, you feel like you are absolutely head over heels in love with them. And even if, you know, once they turn it on, it's only been a few days, but you just feel completely like uh, mind controlled by them. You, you're focused only on them. Um, and so that's, that's how I can explain the very, very beginning of how he got me. Um, but the thing is, is that that fake persona, the one that's bombarding you with love, and fake, well, fake love, because it's not love. Um, I don't think that they really truly have the capacity to love, but um, when they can't keep that up because it's not their true self. And so for the, for the um, reptilians, the, the mask will fall off very, very quickly. It only took two or three weeks for his mask to fall off oh, wow. um, for the first sign of, yeah, it was very quick because they can't keep up a facade of loving because I feel like it makes them hate more. It's so uncomfortable um, to give affection <laughs> that they, they as soon as they feel like they might have you in the very first weeks, they will switch. Um, and the first sign of aggression will come out. Um, but that's sort of how I can explain how he hooked me like a fish in the beginning. Yeah. So, so it definitely wasn't his, <clears throat> let's see his, uh, his ways, I guess, you know, of, of, of conversation, but more of like just the magnetism and the, the, whatever it is that they have that they can do that with, right. Like these pheromones. And yeah. It's just the, the magnetism. That's really where they get you. It's an energy. energy. It is like, mm -hmm. it is like um, they grab you by the neck. It's like a, an invisible claw around your neck. And now they have eyed you to be their slave. <laughs> That's the best way that I can describe it. Um, you're going to be one of their slaves and they have you by the neck. Um, but I want to be very clear that they have multiple people by the neck at the same time. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a, a, an intimate partner, but they have they have multiple people around them that they are using to feed off of. Um, and so for the most part, these types have multiple women. I, I he would actually um, later on admit he always had three four five women at the same time so it wasn't just me however he would he had a, a an obsession with me because um you know i think that well as the story unfolds i think your audience will figure out that i'm a star seed and we have such a a different energetic frequency that dismantling or breaking down a star seed gives so much food to these guys right so um i think that he sized me up very quickly in the beginning knowing that it was going to be a lot of um a lot of I, I don't know how else to explain it but just he would be able to siphon a lot of energy out of me um but yeah wow 
Yeah. So then <clears throat> what happened when you noticed he turned on you? What exactly happened? Oh, it was a, it was a very, very quick, sudden, immediate, sh and it was extremely shocking. So the first time that he turned, um, he had asked me to go um, out to an event and it was a public event, um, you know, at a restaurant. Um, let's, let's say, I don't want to really say which event it was because I don't want to give too much detail. So let's just say like a sporting event that like yeah. you'd be watching on the TV and it was very a packed restaurant. Uh, and so we went and these types are extremely uh, controlling. So they will want to know where you are, what you're doing, who you're with. Um, they'll try to control even what you eat, what you wear. Like it, it's just like you are, you are their property and um, you're not an individual now. You are their slave and they own you. So we went to this event and I took my jacket off. And I think there was a, a few guys that had kind of looked over at me and he got so incredibly intensely mad that he screamed at me in front of everyone to put my jacket back on. <laughs> and I was, it was the first time, this is going from love, sweetie, happy, like this amazing guy that like, you know, opens the door to that intensity that I felt on the first date um, of just this kind of angry, seething sort of energy. <laughs> Uh, and so he screamed at me to put the jacket back on and I'm not the type to be controlled. So I said, I don't want to put my jacket back on. And then he was so angry. I remember somebody came up and asked if he, if they could take one of the chairs at our table and he just like growled at them. No. And the person got scared and took a step back and walked away. And then he snapped his fingers and he's like, let's go. And uh, so I got up and I, I followed him. And so one thing about these types is they, um, f so, okay, I want to say these are my experiences. So when I say these types, it's my experience with these types. I'm not saying that th that I'm an expert or that across the board it's going to be this way. So I don't want to give the wrong impression when I say these types. I mean these types as in my 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 the one that I experienced. Um but anyways, um he walked ahead of me. So they tend to well, he tended to walk ahead of everybody, even his own mother. Um it, it was like he was the dominant force and everybody was beneath him. So he walked ahead of me, he went to the car, and then as soon as I put my hand on the door handle, he sped forward. And I took a step back and I was so shocked because now I'm seeing this monster. Um, and then he sped forward, he turned around, and that was just a show of dominance again, like I say when you get in the car, right? Uh, so he turned back and he came back and I got in the car and then he just started screaming at me in the car. And it was the first time that I felt like I was in the presence of a dragon. And the way that he, he yelled at me was so intense that it made me take a step back in the, in the seat and sort of my whole body just went backwards um, because I've never felt such a, such an intensity before. Uh, and then he, um, afterwards, I just started bawling my eyes out because I was so, so shocked, so incredibly shocked. I'd never experienced anything like that before. And I had had a very, uh, um, abusive relationship with my previous ex, um, to the point where police were involved and I've never felt something like this before. It was unlike, it was an energy, unlike, um, anything that, that, that I thought was possible. Um, that was the moment right then that the confusion and doubt inside of my soul started um, a question of what is happening here because there's something going on that's not normal. Um, and mind you, at the time, I did not know I was a star seed and I didn't know about Dracos. And so I felt like I was dealing with something 
out of this world, but I didn't know what it was. Um, it was very, it was a very strange feeling. Um, and then there was a second incident that happened at a party that was very, oh, and I might, I'll say that soon after his explosion, they turn, they try to turn on the charm right away so that you won't run away. So to keep you back in the, in, the, in control, sweetie, I'm so sorry, grab your, your hand, start kissing it and, uh, and then start future faking like, oh, why don't we plan on going for breakfast tomorrow morning? Why don't why don't I take you shopping? Why don't I and just starts kind of doing that um, so that I won't leave. And then the confusion's even worse because now you're seeing this nice person and then you just saw this animal. So it was a, it was a very confusing. I'd never um, been in such a situation, but um, a second, I'm not going to go into as much detail for this one, but it was very similar. We went to a party. He didn't like the fact that I had had a conversation with a couple of the guys there. And so when we got back to his house, he or when we were in the car, he did another one of those explosions. And that was sort of my breaking point. That was the first time that I said, OK, uh, this is not, this isn't going to happen. Uh, when we got back to his house, I grabbed my stuff. He kicked me out. He, he pointed out to get out. So I left. And as soon as I left, um, I, I just decided I'm not speaking to this man ever again, but I had no idea that they have the power of mind control. So when I walked out of that, when I walked out of that, uh, condo, building um i had no clue that i was gonna have another five years experiences with this person um because the intensity of their mind control and their ability to manipulate is is so much that even when you're not in their presence and you don't want to go anywhere near them they still have you by the neck um as soon as they have their eyes on you and they're going to you are their property, it is very, very difficult once that happens to get away. Um, and I had only met, I had only known him for like three weeks at this point. And so I had like blocked him. And that is when I started to experience the restlessness. Um, it's like a, it's like a perpetual tossing and turning inside of your soul and inside of you. Um, it's kind of like a, the way that I can describe it, it's like a song that plays over and over in your head and you don't want that song in your head, but it's there. Um, it's like an intrusive thought. Um, you know that he's a psychopath, but for whatever reason, you cannot stop thinking about them. And um, you, it's like a physical restlessness. Um, and that's when I ha experienced the first kind of mind control feeling. Um, and it was interesting because at the time I went overseas traveling and um, I still could not get this person out of my head. Um, and I didn't talk to him for two and a half months and I still could not depart from him. But I think a part of the reason why he had such, a, such control over me was because I didn't know what he was. And I had no tools to arm myself and protect myself from the mind control. Yeah. Um, and I didn't know I was a star seed at the time at all. Um, and so, um, so yeah, he, he had a, a total control over me still. And so when I came back from my trip, I unblocked him. And as soon as I unblocked him, he started to message me right away like immediately right away started messaging me. It's almost like he knew yeah, it without right. even, like, how do you, it was really interesting. Like, I don't know how, so, but I mean, when you block somebody and unblock somebody on a certain app, then you see their picture and you don't see their picture. Right. So, um, but it, but he must've had it been looking at it right. constantly. Mm -hmm. to notice so quickly that I had unblocked them, right? To start the whole conversation. So, yeah. And so that's how we reconnected. And, um, and now this part of the story starts to coincide with my own awakening and figuring out that I was a starseed. And um, 
that's when I started to arm myself and I started to figure out um, how to protect myself from, from him. But it, it's been a long, long journey. Um, it was not easy. These, I know that he destroyed somebody in the past. Um, the, one of his ex-girlfriends ended up a drug addict on the street um after two years of being with him, uh, two years on and off of being with him his uh relationships apparently don't last more than three months because of this right um so i know that he has been able to destroy a person in the past and i'm just very lucky that i figured out who i was and was had the the energy the the power inside of me to protect myself um, because they can destroy you. They are dangerous. Um, if you're not equipped to handle it, they could potentially, um, you know, you could fall into addiction or, or it, you know, mental health um, because their, their power, their, their magnetism and their mind control is so strong. It's not easy to, to get away from them. Yeah, absolutely. And so um, when was it that you realized that he was shape-shifting? Okay. <laughs> so, the, so this experience, so after I left and um, I, unblocked, or I unblocked him, we ended up reconnecting again. And, you know, sweetie, I'm sorry. Maybe I was too in love with you. Um, it was an intensity for both of us. Um, maybe it was too much too soon because it was like only like a few weeks right uh i just never felt that way about anybody before and you know all all of the that stuff and he lured me back in um and so uh that period of time only lasted i guess so it was october november december by january so i went back to him in october and by january i had blocked him again um, those three months were the most uh, scary ones um, and the most like aggressive and, vi and violent. And um, there were multiple instances of different things that he did during that time um, that I think your audience should be afraid of, but or or to to know to to watch out for. But so the first time that i saw him shift uh it was another intense moment so he got mad again some sort of jealousy about something and he ended up spitting in my face um and then he grabbed me and he because he didn't want me to leave after he did that he put me in the in his bed and he was kind of kneeling over me and then i saw his face decompose um and when i say decompose i mean the structure of his face decompose and all of a sudden it was as if he was a shadow and he grew like two feet and he was towering over me um and i was so shocked and what happened was that he all of a sudden recomposed and he had a look of bewilderment in his face as if oh shit i lost my composure and he immediately grabbed me um and held me so tight and i i'm talking i'm laying i am on i was laying down on the bed and he was kneeling on top towering over me so he got on top of me um and he he wrapped his arms around me and held me so tight that i could not wiggle i couldn't move um and he's and i was like let me go and i'm trying to get him to let me go and he wouldn't let me go and he wouldn't let let me leave um that whole night and um so that was the first time i was petrified and i realized that at the time i didn't know about dracos and so i thought that maybe he was a demon or he was possessed or i couldn't really um understand what i had just seen um and another thing about him is that he doesn't he doesn't have um pupils 
he has just black eyes and he said it's because he had a surgery on his eyes um and he he said he had a cornea trans or some sort of transplant um but he doesn't have pupils his eyes are just black so um now i'm starting to think like is this guy a demon like, i don't know i don't know is he demon possessed i wasn't really sure at the time because again i didn't really know about dracos um and so i remember i had blocked him as soon as i left in the morning um and uh i quickly unblocked him a few weeks later because i was in the throes of his mind control at this point the magnetism and the intensity of almost like an addiction um, that you have with them. Um, it's something outside of yourself. It's something that's pulling you towards them that uh, it's yeah. I've never felt in my entire life. And I've had boyfriends, I've had crushes, I've had very intense relationships with intimacy and love and um i've never felt this type of magnetism and mind control with this person so ended up unblocking him and um so that's around that time is when he started to groom me um it intimately groom me to deal with more and more pain he would start to bite me so that i would scream or he would start to um make it make the um you know the interactions more sadistic um uh, physically mm -hmm. and so that's part that was part of the with that i'm talking about violence like he never hit me in my face he never beat me or anything but they groom you to accept more and more degenerate behavior towards you and because they have a certain mind control over you um you have almost like a primal fear towards them like you are in the presence of a predator and you are the prey but you're completely in the, under their control it's sort of like a cat playing with a mouse um and the mouse is trying not to move too much so that the so that the cat doesn't swat them you know what I mean? That's sort of like what it feels like to be in the presence of somebody like this. Mm -hmm. um, and so you tend to um, say, vocalize that you don't want something like that and, and complain, but it's almost like they have such control over you that you go along with it. Um, and so that's part of like the, when I talk about violence, it's more about sexual violence um that they feed off of and they feed off of uh, inflicting pain um and so if you're in a relationship with a shifter um you will most likely find because they feed off of that that they might try to push you along to do things that you would normally not want to do or not normally accept um and so as well during this time um it was probably the worst because everything turned into inflicting some sort of discomfort or pain towards me so if i if i was falling asleep um he would try to sleep deprive me by shaking the bed or or elbowing me to wake me up um or making strange sounds um vocal sounds to like weird strange sounds to wake me up um or criticize anything that i would do um or for example uh if i was coming over in a really happy mood um the drive was extremely long and um he would just not answer the phone while I was waiting outside and sometimes make me wait for 30, 40 minutes. And then by the time I would, he would answer the door and let me in, I was uh, in a state of anger and panic and seething rage because he had disrespected me in that way and he would laugh it off and enjoy it. And so he, there's always, purposeful ways to inflict 
whether it's physical, mental, or emotional distress, um, it's in every in every interaction, if you are at the point where you have started to take it and you have been groomed enough to that place, they will act in every circumstance that they can to try to draw out that negativity from you, that negative emotional energy out of you or physical pain out of you. Um, and so, yeah, I think that um, by January, I had had enough and that was, um, I blocked him again. And in that time, um, it was about January. And then that was when COVID hit in March, February, March. And that was when my own awakening began. And that was when I really figured out who I was. And I figured out that he was a Draco. <laughs> uh, so that's the, the part where you come in. <laughs> that was uh, around the time where you and I ended up doing, I believe, the hypnosis and all that stuff. So. Oh, okay. So then okay. Um, you, you come to me, and I don't know at that time, and you'll have to remind me because I had so many hundreds of sessions, so I, I don't remember the details. But um, at that point, did you already had seen him shape? You've seen him yes. shape shift at that point. And yes. um, okay. All right. I so had. Then, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I had already seen him shift. Um, another one thing that I also want to wanted to say is um, that I couldn't, I can explain their energy as if you are being attacked like by radiation or like radio waves that are negative that's how they they feel and they all like it's almost like an attack on your soul from them they have a they have a uh not only an energy of like you feel like you're in the presence of prey like a predator like like it's like you are in the room with a lion um i say dragon because their energy i can imagine like when you watch a movie and you see a dragon breathe fire uh that's what it felt like when i was around him whenever he got angry it was like a dragon breathing fire and i would tell him like you remind me of a dr of a dragon and it was before i knew he was a draco that i would tell him you remind me of a dragon um because he would say i'm like a lion and i'm like you're not like a lion you're like a dragon um and so it was like kind of like a this energy that comes off of them that it feels like a, an attack like on your on your senses um did he and ever smell? another thing did he ever smell no he was very very uh clean okay. and he had a good hygiene so he actually had very strong pheromones um okay. that would kind of draw you in okay. um if he had a particular smell that was bad for me all i could really sense was those pheromones around like with him and he was almost like a it was there was a magnetism towards him okay um so yeah but yeah, so we're at the point where now it's like COVID and all of a sudden I have this violent, violent awakening that I did not expect to have. Um, I had no idea that I was a star seed and the way that I'm not going to go into that story too much because I want to focus more on um, His story. supporting your audience okay. about, you know, how to deal with these these people. Um, but what happened was that I went through a very violent awakening. I remember when I emailed you, I had told you that um, I um, started to get a sense that I there was something different about me. And just one, one co well, there wasn't a coincidence, but one thing led to another led to another. And I started to realize that I was not um originally my soul was very different um and then i had my star seed origin chart done and i ended up realizing um that i was my soul origin is from arcturus um i realized that my entire family's soul origin is from arcturus um and that 
there was a whole fleet that came together. And so this was done by a very uh, trustworthy starseed that does uh, starseed charts. And then as well, I have always had um, clairvoyance and certain psychic abilities and um, my entire family has as well. And so when she did my that chart, it all coincided with my abilities um, and all of the personalities. Like, so my, for example, my niece um, has Arcturian and Indigo and she's angelic. My daughter has Arcturian and Draco and she's very strong and almost aggressive like you would expect. And um, so it was very uh, telling for me because I had always had these abilities and I'd always felt like I didn't belong here. Like I had this sense that um, this was not my place. Um, this plant, this planet shocks me. I have a very hard time being here, to be honest with you. I still haven't reconciled it. Um, and so that's when I started to realize that um, looking back, everything started to make sense. I started to realize, um, you know, could he be a Draco? Um, at the time, I was very insecure, though. It was brand new. To, all of it was brand new to me. Um, I was still very vulnerable. Um, and w during my awakening, a lot of paranormal things started to happen in my house, almost like trying to scare me to not have the awakening. And I have gone through those with you already, Elisa, but I'm not going to go into them for detail because, um, you know, maybe if we do like a question answer thing later on or something, people can ask me about that. But um, just for the purpose of staying on track, I'm not going to go into that. But um, so when I came to you, I said, I have this. I don't think at the time we had even uh, I had a, an inkling that he might be like a Draco soul, but I had no, uh, I, I wasn't really sure. But then when I had seen him shift, it was very like, oh my gosh, am I dealing with a shifter? So when you and I did our quantum hypnosis, um, the first thing that we were shown during that, that hypnosis was his face come, his human face come towards me and then all of a sudden it um it, there was like a draco face over it and all of a sudden his that face became a draco and i said in the recording oh he's a he's a draco he's a shifter and it was like it was shown to me that you're dealing with a shifter and i remember after our our um session uh you and i i said to you why would they send me a shifter why would i have the experience of 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 dealing with a shifter and i remember you saying to me you don't know how powerful you are and it was so funny because at the time i i didn't know my own strength and i was so vulnerable and um so insecure in where I was in my awakening that I couldn't fathom that I would even ha have been sent one or have the, the, you know, this experience of, of being around one. Um, but that I think was the turning point for me after my, ex my, um, my hypnosis with you was my turning point. And that was when I started to really get my power. And that it was not, it was not immediate. This was a journey to figure out how to arm myself against them and how to take my life back because he has held me in a prison for years. It is a, a prison that you can't see, but it feels like I would tell my friends, he has me by the neck. Um, he might like, I would tell my friend, it feels like he mind controls me, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, tell her anything about all of the other stuff because she's not really, you know, somebody that I could talk about that stuff with. Um, and I just almost, sometimes when I would lay in my bed, I would just feel like there were walls around me. 
um, because I was stuck, so stuck in his manipulation. Um, but after one of the main things that was really important for me to start to regain my power was to figure out to, to learn as much as possible about malignant narcissism. So if somebody feels like they are dealing with a Draco, I would highly suggest you absorb as much information as possible about malignant narcissism because um, it was it, the behavior of the malignant narcissist um, it's a narcissist with with sadistic tendencies um, that like to inflict pain um, are, are mimic exactly what dealing with these these are also the site they the cycle of abuse of a malignant narcissist is what they do they will they will kind of love bomb you devalue you discard you to play mind games um, so I think it's really important. It really helped me to understand fully what I'm dealing with, um, to read as much as possible about that subject. And I will say that not every narcissist is a Draco, but every Draco is a narcissist. They are narcissists to the extreme. Um, the malignant ones, have sociopath what 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 the medical community calls sociopathic and psychopathic tendencies um i really think that the medical community only sees the surface but i think that malignant narcissism is and this is only my own perception i think it's extremely closely tied to draco's infiltrating our planet um and i think that a lot of the malignant narcissists that you see their behavior is is the Draco behavior. So it'll be very important to arm yourself with as much knowledge as possible. Um, there's so much online. There's also even YouTube videos to teach you some of the tactics and, and things that they do to teach you about their behavior. And I think I watched probably like a hundred of them <laughs> um, to try to arm myself and and, you know, protect myself and just kind of increase my knowledge um, about what I was dealing with. But it was it's not just about that. Um, another thing that I ended up starting to do was to call him out. And that's where it gets a little bit a little bit interesting. Um, and um, before I get into that, though, um, do you want to talk about some of the pictures and videos that I've shared with you? um what do you think alisa <laughs> yeah no definitely because um these are things that i think people can do to um to also kind of uh validate what they're feeling you know um mm -hmm. so uh yeah videos and pictures are going to tell you could tell you um uh, information that that might be helpful to realize that you are dating a reptilian so. yeah um so i i've i've shared with you as much as possible i've sent you and obviously we can't share pictures and videos on this call because this is a person that has a job and this is a person that is in society right now so obviously it would, i would never do that um but after i realized that that what I was dealing with, I started to go back to all of the pictures and videos that we had taken in the past. And I started to see in certain pictures <laughs> that, for example, there was one video where we had been out with friends and stuff, and I had um, kind of panned over the environment and it had landed on him. And at the very end of the video, you see him, the shift and his eye morph into this huge large eye with a slit um and so i stopped the video on that and changed some of like the um you know the the lighting and stuff and then you could very clearly see this huge massive eye 
superimposed over his regular eye with a slit on it. I remember um, I have sent that to you. And then also the, um, in many of the pictures, you will notice that he has slit pupils, um, and like a slit pupil, even though in person he doesn't have pupils, in the pictures you see a slit in his eye. Um, and so that was very interesting as well. I, that's when I started to be like, okay, so I now not only have I seen him in person um, that one time, and then I start to see the pictures and videos. Now my curiosity has peaked and I continue to see him. And there were twice where his foot started to shift. And it was very interesting. So we were in, in bed and his feet are already kind of shaped strangely like a like a like i don't know like an animal <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain like he has a very extremely high arc and kind of strangely figured um feet and his when i was laying there he was laying there either pretending to sleep or sleeping i i highly doubt that a lot of the time he was actually sleeping he would kind of pretend to sleep a lot of times, but um, his one big toe started to grow and morph and I'm staring at it and I have my head on his chest and I'm looking at his toe and it starts to like kind of morph and grow. And I'm saying in my head, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And then he moved his foot and, and hid it underneath the blanket as if he knew that his composure was slipping uh and then he hit it and i thought to myself oh my gosh this is all real <laughs> like this is all real i cannot believe that i am dealing with this um so that was another time where i saw him shift and at this point i started to um oh we should probably talk about also when i had my concussion but um so yeah at this point I'm realizing, okay, this is this is real. Like I've I have so much physical evidence now. I've witnessed it with my own eyes. Now I have the hypnosis session that confirmed it. Um, you know, and so that was when I realized, wow, I am actually in real life having the experience on this planet with this shapeshifter. Um so yeah <laughs> yeah that's crazy so what was it that finally broke the camel's back like where you're like that's it i you were able to break away from from him because i think it had to do with this concussion and the you know what happened with that well when i i suffered when i suffered a concussion there was an an incident that i'm not going to go into huge detail with but what had mm -hmm. happened was um when the ambulance when the ambulance was called and my friend was there these two sacks had fallen out of my insides uh, i don't really want to be too graphic about it um right. female parts so the only way that those sacks would have female parts yeah um these two very grotesque sacks had of, of fallen blood. out of yeah of myself blood. my um so it was like a gelatin sack covered in blood it was really disgusting and you said it was um, the size of and like a, uh, the size of like a you know like your like a uh, fist, like a fist. Yeah, and my friend was absolutely bewildered and was like, what the F is that? <laughs> what is that? Um, it was it was very, very intense. I I didn't know. I, I, I had no idea what those things were. Um, and then when you and I did our hypnosis, we had um, uncovered that those two sacks were a mechanism of a part of the way he was controlling me at the time. Um, and so 
when I when that happened to me, I wasn't it was only a few months after. So I, I wasn't having contact with this person during that time. And it was only a few months after where you and I had the, the hypnotherapy session. Um, what I found what coincided when that happened um, was that I started to break away and get, regain control of myself um, and the intensity of the mind control wasn't as bad at that point. Um, it started to dissipate, but mind you, not go away at all. Um, I would say the mind control, while during that intense period um, before the hypnosis session, I would say it was a nine out of 10. I could not get like myself out of that situation and after that it started to dissipate down to like five four but it was it, it, it's always it was always there but it, he didn't have as much power over me anymore um and so that was something strange i don't know how to explain it i have no explanation i don't know what those things were um but it did coincide with me being able to break f more free and so um yeah, there's some some intimacies about the way in which he would do certain things where uh, I can sort of look back and see where those things could have been placed there. Um, and but anyways, uh, yeah, I don't think I kind of want to go too into detail about that stuff. But um, yeah, I think that they do have multiple mechanisms of controlling their victims. Um, not just mind control, not just manipulation. They may have ways of planting things as well. Yeah. And I do recall when we did our our uh, our hypnosis session, there was interference. I don't know if you remember, but we ended up the call ended up getting um, like fuzzy, dropping, and then us having to like go back into it. Um, we were having a lot of interference during that time. Um, and so they do have, they do have ways of manipulating that we as humans don't, don't have, like they, they have, they have certain powers that we don't. Um, and so just to be aware of that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, so finally, do you just block them? Or how did you Oh, I oh, remember. No. Well, you also had the conversation that you started asking him questions oh, about, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, texting mm -hmm. about like how tall he was. And he yeah, was, and know. I sent those over to you. So, so it's very interesting. So at that, at that point, it took a while for me. So now I started to, um, what you, Okay, it's very important to know that the more contact that you have with them, the more you're opening yourself up to be hurt. And if you open yourself up to have contact with them, you will be hurt. There's no question about it because I can equate it like when a cat plays with a mouse and we, we understand that that mouse is essentially being tortured to death. But the cat, it's his instinct. He isn't purposely trying to, although, you know, it is, it is the, the prey and he is essentially most likely going to eat it in the end. He's not, in a sense, purposely trying to inflict pain. It's just their nature, right? Um, and so it is their nature to behave this way. Right. It's, like, uh, it's, it's like somebody telling us not to have empathy. Can we just turn off empathy? We can't because we're human. And so um, we end up, we are, we are, we have that innate capacity to feel emotion and love and all of those feelings naturally. That's, it just comes naturally to us. They're the opposite. They have an innate in feeling of inflicting pain and suffering. So if you open yourself up to have contact with them, you will open yourself up to more instances of pain and suffering as well as mind control. The more contact you have with them, the more they're gonna be able to control, um, send those intrusive thoughts um, and you will act on them. 
so I will give you an example of how that could manifest. Um, I've never been one to like totally spoil my partners. Um, but when I was with him, I would have these intrusive thoughts of buying him things, of bringing over food, of being like his slave of cleaning his house of and these these are not things that i would normally be obsessing about um and so when i talk when i say intrusive thoughts and mind control it's like they take over it's almost like something is telling you to act in a certain way that is going to benefit them um, and so I can't tell you how many times I brought over food or I was out shopping and I'd get this intrusive thought to buy him something and I would actually buy him something and bring it over. And this isn't naturally something that I would normally do. Um, the mind control manifests in many different ways, not just like um, having this magnetism, but also in your actions. And so the more you cut him off, um the more control you're going to have over your your own mind um it does it kind of it cuts off some of the the gateway of them being able to control you but not all of it because they can do it psychically even if like um yeah even if they're not there so the way that i started to really wean off of this person and when i say wean i mean it because it's like you're dealing with a heroin addiction um, that you, I started to, um, listen to the, um, literature about malignant narcissism and how to c protect yourself. And that is no contact. And so I would go through short periods of no contact, which became bigger and bigger and bigger. So I would go no contact for two months. Then it became, I would, I would have an interaction with him for a month or a couple of weeks. And then I would block for three months, four months, six months. Um, there was a point right after your, after you and I did the hypnosis that I moved away for a year to essentially get away from him. He still had some control over me. Uh, we still had communication. And then when I would come back into town, I would see him. But like I said, it was less and less. He, I think that he noticed that he was losing grip on me and he would turn up the charm a bit more. But at this point, it wasn't working anymore. Um, and so that's when I started to regain my power and really realize that um, I was beating him at his game, um, and I was protecting myself energetically. I also leaned very into my own spirituality and I started to really focus on f being from, uh, you know, growing up in faith. I started focusing on God. I started focusing on, um, you know, certain angels and um, I, I was made aware that I have a whole fleet taking care of me and I have had so many instances throughout my life where that has been proven. Um, I have never been in horrific situations and if I am entering a horrific situation, I've always noticed that I get protected out of it. Um, and so I've always had this sense of like something protecting me. So I leaned into that more as well. And I started to make more and more distance from him, taking his power away from him. Um, and so that's a big one. And I want to say when you're dealing with one of these, do not beat yourself up because you unblock him for the 150th time, because these are very powerful creatures. Um, it, when when the literature when you read the literature about malignant narcissism everybody's going to say oh you have to go no contact well i'm sorry but when you're going crazy um being mind controlled and having a horrible restlessness and having this intense uh feeling like you have to unblock him <laughs> um it's okay to sometimes give in and just go through this journey, but you will get stronger and stronger um, and create more and more um, 
uh, like space between you and this individual, eventually I promise you, you will break free because I seriously did not think that I could break free from this person because they were so strong. And in the beginning I was so vulnerable. Um, but now I am, I'm so strong in, in myself and in my own power and i realize um they need us to feed off of us i don't need him i i don't need him whatsoever he needs me and so that was very that was a turning point for me to say no 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 you and and oh so that also coincided with me starting to call him out which is the fun part <laughs> uh when i started to call him out um, it was very interesting. So um, I started just actually just telling him, you're a Draco. I know you're a Draco and um, I've seen you shift. I screenshotted some of the pictures of him and videos of him shifting and send them over to him. And the thing that, you know, Alisa and I have talked about, which is very very telling is that not in any one of those messages that I have sent him has he ever denied that he's a Draco. If you were, and I don't know if there's a certain rule that when they get found out that they're not allowed to deny, like, is there a universal rule? Like, they I don't have, know. Yeah, they, they have a, a rule that they have to tell you what they're doing. So if, if they can't lie, basically. Oh, that's very interesting because as you saw in the, some of the, so I started back in the day, um, it was like a few years ago, I sent you messages back then. And then recently, like the last time that I had contact with him, I sent you some more messages where I'm like, you're a Draco. And he never once denies it. One time I sent him a message. I'm like, are you ever going to show me your true self are you going to tell me how tall you are and then he just wrote back lol eight feet tall um and so it was kind of interesting because like you would think that a person would go a normal person if i had sent those messages to my ex he would have said are you crazy what yeah. are you talking about right exactly what you need you you should be in an insane asylum like he would have said something you know like what is a draco what right. do, i don't even know what you're what you mean what what are you talking about yeah. um oh you're a conspiracy theorist like they would say something because this is so outland like it would appear so outlandish but not a single debuttal from this person mm -hmm. in fact in certain instances he would just play along um and I remember this one time after one of the times, and also after I had called him out, I have seen him in person and we hung out. He never once addressed it, never said, hey, what were those messages you were sending me? Never denied it. And in fact, this one time, him and I and another one of his friends, we went to Nordstrom and this song came on the, the, the system. And it was the song that had uh, the words shape shifting in it. And I don't know, I don't even know what song that is. And then he just smiled at me and he looked at me and he's like, did they just say shape shifter? And right then I'm just like, you, you bastard, you know that I know that you know that I know. <laughs> like it was just so, um, so unbelievable, but never ever has he ever denied it. Um, and so I think that that also, um, I told him just flat out in messages, you can't fool me because I'm Arcturian and you cannot fool me. And I, and I always tell, I've told him, I'm like, I'm, I can see you, I can see you fully and I know who you are. Um, and I told him before, you can't hurt me anymore. Um, and so it was very interesting that he didn't, he, there was no denial, nothing. And, um, in his pursuit of me, um, it was like getting a loved one back as opposed to getting pr a prey back. It was it kind of his his pursuit of me shifted a bit, um, but he also uh, it was it was almost like became like a tether for him and his his 
pursuit of me became more relentless. Like it didn't matter how much I would call him out and and just not care anymore and kind of grow into my own power. Um, it almost made him want to pursue me more, but not in like an aggressive, like I, I th like, it's almost like I piqued his interest kind of thing, you know, like I've never had this happen before. No one's ever figured me out before. So I need to keep you close kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but you will all be happy to know that he is completely blocked. And as I told, um, as I told Elisa, uh last week when we had a conversation i feel in my soul and in my heart that that period is now now has to be put to rest because i'm entering a new period in my life and it's like i'm turning a new leaf now i think i have i have come to a point where i have learned the the lessons that i needed um in in that time and I need to now leave that that whole thing because I've ex I've escaped the prison um, that he had me in, and now the only interaction would be out of curiosity. But I don't need that anymore because every time you have contact with them, they will hurt you. And I think that my soul and inner self is entering a new era of growth and there has to do with love um because i recall that with during our hypnosis session um you had asked for somebody in my fleet to come through and an arcturian being came through and started talking through me um and you had asked what is her purpose and they s immediately said love and i think that these experience the experience with this particular shapeshifter has allowed me to grow into my own power to actually now start to practice some of the, the things that i need to know um that i'm here for um i don't know right now what that looks like but i know that that i need to let go of that chapter in order to allow all of these new experiences to come in um so that's sort of where i'm where i'm at now yeah yeah, and I, I also ask you to look at the positive, right? What was the positive mm -hmm. of having him in your life? And there were a lot of positives because he was there to teach you how powerful you are. He was there to teach you to love yourself because you weren't loving yourself. He was there to yeah. teach you all these amazing things. And so he did, and now you've grown out of it and you can leave him behind. So in the end, these experiences that are so painful are there for our growth, you know? Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. Um, so I, I do feel like um, I, when I met him, I was at a point where I was very, I had no idea who I was, first of all, and I was very insecure in, of myself. And even when I figured out in the very beginning what my origins were, I was still very insecure. I still didn't, I still had a lot of doubt in myself. Um, I didn't really think I was important or that I had a lot of power or that I, I meant anything. Um, and overcoming the Draco onslaught, the unbelievable mind control, the energy, the, the intensity of that person, it could have destroyed me. Um, I think that it could have completely destroyed me. And the fact that I survived it, um, just this is, this is, uh, you know, on a completely different energy frequency, I would, I would equate it to having a demon in your house, really, like, it's just so intense. Um, having survived it has just made me feel like, this sense of peace and um, comfort with myself. Like I am, I am okay and I am comfortable with myself. And I, um, I, I just feel a sense of strength now that I, I did not have. So yes, you're right. It, um, but let me tell you, it's been a hell of an experience. Oh, a hell of an experience. Sure. And I, I, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. And you know, only the strong ones, 
the star seeds that are strong are going to choose those experiences and are going to contract with reptilians and dracos to teach them certain lessons. So, I mean, that's how powerful you are. You, you were like, I can handle this. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to, you know, deal with this. So it's, it's just such a, a um, it, 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 it is the catalyst. that will that had you spread your wings so you could be the rising phoenix you know Exactly. And one thing that I will say is that you and I have had planned for since for years to do this, this interview. And I remember that it never really worked out. And I truly feel like the reason why it didn't work out was because I hadn't beat him yet. I, I hadn't, I hadn't, I hadn't won the game. I was still in it. And I, I could, you said to me, you said to me at one point, Um, you know, just explain in the end how you got out of it. And I remember leaving that, that, it, that conversation with you going, but I'm not out of it and feeling like I couldn't give the proper guidance to your audience because I was still in it. And, you know, that was, I think maybe even a year or two ago that you and I had that conversation, maybe a year ago, but now it's just the right time now because I can say, fully that I I'm out of it and and now I'm entering a new era so it's really this is a really good uh thing for me to do as closure as well like share the story um and the the last thing that I want to say to your audience is if you are dealing with a reptilian if you feel like you are and they could be your sister they could be your coworker they could be um they could be anybody it doesn't have to be an intimate partner if you feel i i truly feel like sometimes they come into the family also to disrupt star seeds um but anyways i i just want to say to you that i highly encourage you to be kind to yourself because getting out of that situation is not easy and While a lot of the literature out there that talks about malignant narcissism is like, you need to go no contact immediately. Just know that that might not be the case, that, that it might take many blockings and unblockings for you to get out of it. If I could say how many blockings and unblockings that happened over the five years, I would say at least like 50, like, <laughs> you know, around there, like a lot, right? Like a lot, you know, uh, block for a couple of weeks and then unblock and then block for maybe not 50. That's an exaggeration, um, you know, but many, many, many <laughs> blockings and unblockings. It took a very long time. So please be kind to yourself and know that you are dealing with such a strong energy. Um, it's just going to take time for you to figure out what works for you to arm yourself and to protect yourself. But I, I promise you that if you are a star seed, you will most likely beat them at the end. Um, you are way stronger than they ever will be. You have God and they do not. You are their food. They need you. You don't need them. And once you break free, you will flourish. So I just wanted to say that um, because I'm thinking about when I was in the thick of it. I'm thinking about those three months where I was being very intensely abused. Um, the, that, those were the moments where I needed the guidance the most. And, um, you know, if I had been able to talk to somebody that had experience with a Draco and they were able to tell me those things, maybe I could have maybe um, not beat myself up so much and hated myself and um, for not having the power to get away from them. Although at that time, I, I didn't even know he was a Draco, but... Yeah, so hopefully that hopefully my words resonate with somebody. I don't know. I'm I'm really just doing this because when I was going through it, I had nobody to talk to about this. You were the only person, Elisa. Um and it was a very very lonely journey because you know, it isn't obviously not mainstream. Um and so hopefully my experiences and words um resonate with somebody that might be going through it and helps somebody that is going through it. Yes. Absolutely.
Absolutely. So um, definitely uh, thank you so much for uh, finally feeling strong enough to come here and to tell your story. And um, I know I just feel like it's definitely going to help some people um, understand where they are. And if, you know, if, if they, if, If you're out there and you see this video and you don't have anybody to talk to you, feel free to text me or not text me, but send me an email at quantum life transformations with an S at gmail.com. And I don't look at that email box very often, but if I see your email, I will make sure that I reply and try to, you know, help steer you in a, in a way, in a good way. But I would definitely suggest going to any quantum healer, any Uh, you know, quantum hypnosis healer knows about reptilians. So um, there's a website called quantumhealers.com and there's many there. And you can, you know, look and see what who you resonate with. And, but again, any of them will be able to have a session with them and you'll be able to talk to them about your situation. So um, thank you, Kay, for... Uh, this amazing conversation. Thank you for your bravery to come and talk to us about it. And, um, and yeah, and uh, guys, just, uh, you know, love yourselves. That's, that's really what this all comes down to is loving yourselves unconditionally to, um, to see the, to see the amazing, powerful person, human being, starseed that you are. So um, thank you for watching. I hope you definitely forward this to um, to many out there so that they they can have an idea of what they're going through and they get some help. All right. So thank you so much, everybody. And uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye bye. Thank you.